We're in cruise today in a Citation Ultra, up at flight level 430, 43,000 feet. And we're up here trying to stretch the range of what this airplane can reach. Uh, I wanted to talk for a minute about the uh, angle of attack indicator and uh, how we use that up at these higher altitudes. We're going to ask for flight level 450 wrong way. That's the wrong altitude for the direction of flight westbound. But uh, we'll see if we can get uh, that altitude in order to uh, get every last bit of fuel that we can out of the economy here. And um, as far as the angle of attack gauge goes and how that plays into some of this high altitude planning, what we're looking for is we never want to try leaving an altitude that we're currently at to go to the next higher altitude until we have an angle of attack of, of uh, 0.25 or less. So right now we're right about 0.24 and uh, the thing is if we if we were up at say like 0.26 or 27, 28, something like that, um, what that would be telling us is that we just don't have the climb performance available. We uh, as we climb into that thinner air, the um, the thrust from the engines and the uh, density of the air would just it wouldn't work to get all the way up to the next higher altitude without getting to a potentially dangerously high angle of attack. Whereas if we uh, if we are at 0.25 or less we know that the airplane's capable of getting there. So we could go to the AFM, look at the climb charts, uh, do a bunch of calculations about our our current weight based on our fuel load and the the uh, air temperature outside and, and see if we have the uh, performance via the climb charts. But really the AOA gauge is just a, a quicker, simpler, um, equally reliable way of uh, seeing if we can get up to that higher altitude. Well, we've put in our request with center to climb. We're, we're waiting on uh, them to get back to us about that. While we're waiting, uh, what I want to talk about here is that when we're in the climb, there's a couple different ways to program the flight director and the autopilot to climb. We've got uh, pitch mode, which uh, we just have to roll the, the pitch wheel on the center pedestal and uh, set the pitch attitude to wherever we want it. Or we can also use the uh, flight level change mode, filch mode. And that will hold a uh, preset airspeed. And uh, and with either of these modes that we can climb in, uh, some in some cases, pitch mode can be a, a little bit um, smoother, like it won't oscillate at all, whereas flight level change mode sometimes can, if you're in turbulence, can oscillate a bit. and uh, and uh, be a little bit less comfortable for the passengers. That's kind of the main reason why we don't do that all the time. Uh, but in either mode, what you have to be careful of is that as we're climbing, we want to make sure that the uh, angle of attack gauge doesn't exceed about 0.35 or so. Uh, maybe you could go to 0.36 or 0.37 in smooth air, but if you get uh, steeper than that, um, it gets really hard to accelerate out of the of the climb uh, once you've leveled off. So um, if you uh, if you get it up to like 0.4 AOA or something like that, you're not so much at risk of stalling as you are just uh, you're at the the uh, operating limits of the engine in the sense of that the engine can't produce any more power, and because the angle of attack is high enough, you start getting enough induced drag. That uh, that you just can't accelerate uh, once you've leveled off, and uh, you kind of end up mushing along there at whatever current airspeed you're at. And the only way to get out of that situation is to descend. Um, so whenever we climb, we just are always careful to not exceed about 0.35 AOA. Okay, they've uh, they've cleared us to uh, climb out of 430 to 450. We've got that dialed into the altitude alerter. So I'm going to start by rolling the pitch wheel up and notice that the altitude hold mode just kicked off on the autopilot. And uh, 
as I uh, pitch up initially, I usually set it at these higher altitudes to just about a three or four degree pitch up uh, attitude uh, using uh, the pitch mode of the autopilot. And uh, you have to monitor that because obviously uh, you don't want it to uh, pitch into a stall. You don't want to get so slow that the aircraft stalls. And uh, as that slows down, you see the uh, airspeed decreasing. At any point along the way here, I can uh, go into filch mode. That's 1,000 to climb. I'm going to go into filch mode. Notice that it locks on to whatever the current airspeed is. So you can see uh, 0.62 Mach. And uh, that's a, a fairly safe airspeed. Um, you could climb as slow as uh, maybe uh, 0.60 or so at this altitude, but what you really care about is the um, angle of attack. So uh, it's kind of a fine balancing act at these higher altitudes. Notice here that um, even holding 0.62 Mach, uh, the the rate of climb is just hardly anything. In fact, it, it's kind of teetering on the edge of a potentially descending. So we'll uh, we'll. Uh, pitch that, or we'll set that to about 0.61 mock, see if that helps a little bit. I'm going to tweak the power here, make sure we don't uh, put too much power out on the N1s. And uh, that gets us climbing again. I'll maybe go to 0 0.60 mock, pitch up just a little bit more. Um, so we're kind of balancing right on the edge here, uh, trying to get some climb out of the aircraft, but also keeping an eye on that AOA because you see that it's creeping up close to 0.35 and we don't want to uh, exceed that by much if at all. And it's locking on to 450. Looks like it's going to level off. If we make it there, no problem. And uh, as we level off, that angle of attack is going to start decreasing again. As we uh, accelerate, notice that the angle of attack is decreasing, but it's a very slow uh, process to decrease the angle of attack. It really uh, is kind of hanging on the edge whenever we're operating here, right at the max operating altitude. Since I'm focusing on the angle of attack in the, this uh, video, I also wanted to point out how on the 5, the Ultra, and the Encore, the angle of attack gauge is uh, they call it indexed to the um, engine anti-ice switches. So um, what that means is that if we turn the engine anti-ice on, the angle of attack gauge will, will be uh, recalibrated, so to speak, to show us at a higher angle of attack than what we actually are, um, meaning that we are closer to a stall than what we actually are. And um, they do that because they want to... Um, show uh, a safety margin for if you have ice on the airframe. They're assuming that if you're running engine anti-ice, you have ice on the airframe, and therefore uh, you are closer to a stall when you have ice on the airframe. So they're trying to show that possibility with the angle of attack gauge. So here I'm going to flip in, uh, either, you could have one or both engine anti-ice sw ice switches on. I'm just going to flip one on. And notice that as soon as I turn it on, the angle of attack increases even though our airspeed hasn't changed, our altitude, pitch attitude, nothing's changed. Um, it just shows us at a higher angle of attack. And then I turn that engine anti-switch off and the angle of attack decreases to show really what our true angle of attack is. Um, so uh, that's a safety margin that's built into the five, the Ultra and the Encore that is not available in the Citation II. Um, and uh, that also explains why in the five, the Ultra and the Encore, if you are you have separate uh, landing performance data for engine anti switches on, because uh, if you are running engine anti switches on, uh, you have a uh, it indicates a higher angle of attack, and therefore your approach speed on landing, your ref speed is going to be faster. And of course, if you have a faster ref speed, faster approach speed. Um, that means that you're going to have a longer landing roll. And 
that's the assumption if you have ice on the airframe coming into land, you're going to run those engine anti-switches on um, and approach faster and need more landing distance to, to uh, roll out with.